in the saddle and for what? I ain't even seen a stray, much less any sign. You heard what the man said, Jim. We hunt for strays, and so that's what we're doing. Yeah, you round them up and you line them out and you push them from sun up to sundown. What do you get out of it? Nothing. You start all over again. Well, I'll tell you, Rowdy, this is my last drive. When we hit Denver. I'm gonna take my share and buy me a saloon. Uh, Jim? You bet. I'm gonna prop my boots up on that bar and just rear back in the shade. Psst. Jim. You betcha. The rest of my life. Uh, Jim? What? <laughs> Well, you know, range bull. What is it? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you find out while I get out of here. I'll smile at him, Jim. Don't let him think we're nervous. Yeah, just call me old nonchalant. Nonchalant. <laughs> Creature. It must be the yellow scarf you're wearing. You can't abide the color. Well, I hope that neither of you are injured. Uh, no, oh, not where it shows any. Nonchalant. I'm Kathleen Dundee. Oh, Roddy Yates. Miss Dundee. Uh, oh, Jim Quince, ma'am. Uh, we're with the cattle drive, heading for Denver. Ooh, cow drivers. Very interesting. Heading for Denver? Uh, yes, ma'am. Oh. Well, you, you must forgive me bad manners, but uh, I was just sitting down having myself a cup of tea. Of course, you'll be joining me. Tea? Uh, well, no, ma'am, we have to go catch our horses. Everything in its own time, as Robbie Burns was wont to say. I'm sure that your animals are wonder back to you both. Come along. The kettle's on. Guess if we don't go, Carn, whatever his name is, might not approve. Yeah. There's really 
really nothing like tea, especially when it's properly brewed. I once tried to get used to your national beverage. Coffee? Mm-hmm. I'm afraid that it couldn't get used to me. Oh, do sit down. Yeah. The Puget's kin card, my great-grandsire on my father's side. Oh, and the Havilands, 1821, my mother's. So do be careful with it. Are either of you gentlemen familiar with Coley Sibber? Oh, uh, well, I, I knew a Calix Sibber down on the red. He, he used to have a feral layout. You remember him? <laughs> no. The Sibber I'm referring to was an 18th century English playwright. Uh, good, nevertheless. Oh, uh, no, that wouldn't be him. Tea, thou soft, thou sober sage, and venerable liquid. <laughs> Quite appropriate, don't you think so? Yes. Um, say, ma'am, uh... I don't mean to be nosy, but uh, where are the rest of your people? People? Yeah. What people? Well, you're not out here all alone. <laughs> not quite. Monmouth, McKeith, Macduff, and I believe that uh, you're familiar with Canusti. Yes, ma'am, we met him. They're quite harmless, really. I've practically raised them since their infancy. <laughs> they go along with the things in my wagon. They're all part of my dowry. Well, I, I thought you, you was fixing to open up some kind of a swap shop. Dundee heirlooms, a swap shop? Hardly, Mr. Quince. Uh, Miss Dundee. Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen, uh, you mean to tell me you're out here 70 miles from nowhere with just a wagon load of... Heirlooms. Heirlooms. And uh, four breeding bulls looking for a husband? Not a husband, Mr. Yates. A husband-to-be. You see, I was betrothed in Edinburgh at the livestock fair a year ago. Richard Whiting was his name. A fine, strapping man. A pioneer rancher of the great American Southwest. Or so he said. Oh. If only I could have seen the villainy behind that great smile and the twinkling eyes. <laughs> lies. Lies. All of it lies. The great ranch he talked about. Nothing but a mud shack and the beautiful herd. Scraggy, underfed beasts. Oh, not fit to tread the pastures with Macduff. And that wasn't all either. It wasn't me he wanted to walk beside. It was my wealth. Oh, content he was to shut me away in the kitchen with my fancy heirlooms while he flitted away my inheritance like snowflakes in a bathtub. Why, a man like that, he ain't worth being killed. So it's back to Scotland I'm going. Me and my bulls and my dowry. What's left of it? You see, I ran short of supplies and I lost my way. Oh, this country's like a crazy quilt. It's full of capricious canyons and deceitful creeks. Ah, but now that I've found you, everything's all right. It is? Well, oh, we're all driving to Denver. We can all drive together. Uh, Miss Dundee. Uh, Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen, uh, you see, uh, you don't realize that we got a herd of 3,000 beeves, see? Oh, that doesn't bother me at all. Well, ma'am, wouldn't it make more sense to freight you and your dowry into Denver? Well, I'm afraid that's not possible. <laughs> you see, that beast, he left me with nothing, not even a farthing. Uh, but, you see... Uh, you wouldn't want me to be stranded out here 60 miles from nowhere, would you? Oh. I guess we wouldn't think of that, now, would we? <clears throat> ah, capital. Right, I'll go and pack, and then we can all be on our way. Uh, one lost female, four breeding bulls, Tin suit, 3,000 head of cattle. Yeah, that trail boss named Favor. Oh, what? Bulls, boss, the biggest breeding stock I ever did see. The herd took one look at him and busted loose all down the line. Now, well, what are you standing here for? Break out a rifle and cut him down. Well, I thought of that, too, but I was afraid I might hit Rowdy. Hit Rowdy? Well, Quince, too. You see, they brought the bulls in, them and the woman. Here they come.
Joe, all of you, get out there and get rid of those bulls. But Rowdy. No, oh, he's mine. He's all mine. Oh, she. Oh, now, wait a minute, boss. Maybe you better have some coffee. It's good for the nerves. The only one thing's going to help my nerves blood. Dundee, your bulls, ma'am. Macduff, whoa, that's far enough. And what do you knotheads think you were doing? Uh, well, you see, boss, it was this way. I send you out for strays, and you come back with four crazy bulls and a rolling junkyard. Junkyard? Dundee heirlooms junkyard? And just who do you think you are? You great oversized, beady-eyed cross between uh, a... Hey, that's the boss. <sighs> oh, Mr. Favor, of course. Oh, how charming. Well, you see, Mr. Yates and uh, Mr. Quincy, they were just telling me what a wonderful gentleman you are and a great inspirational leader. What are you waiting for? Get those bulls out of here. Well, that won't really be necessary, boss. You well, see, uh... those bulls are trained, boss. They mind her, uh, don't they, ma'am? Oh, certainly. If you want the animals removed, Mr. Favor, all you have to do is to ask him. Monmouth, move over there. Then he's Macduff. Get along with you. See? All right, Joe. Just make sure they keep moving. Don't get too close to them. They're not used to you yet. Yet? Yeah, see, that's what I was going to tell you, boss. You see, Miss Dundee here. Well, Oh, what he's trying to tell you, Mr. Favor, is that these two gallant gentlemen of yours, in the true tradition of the great American West, have offered to a lost, maltreated woman the sanctuary of your cattle drive. They did what? Uh, well, she was down to her last cup of tea. Well, we just couldn't leave her out there alone and lost. You expect me to take four bulls and this? Kathleen Dundee, Aberdeen, Scotland. On my cattle drive? Uh, well... She had no place to go, boss. She had no money, not even a farthing. Just four big bulls. Oh, I assure you, Monmouth and Macduff and Dunheath and Canoosty, oh, there'll be no trouble at all, none whatsoever. And, uh, well, I could be very useful to you. And I promise to stay well out of the way. Mr. Favor, I've been lost a long time. I'm alone in a strange land, and all I want to do is to get back to Aberdeen where my bulls and my junkyard and I belong. Please, Mr. Favor. Uh, Mr. Favor, I could use some more help around Chuck Wagon. Me too. And uh, I'll put the bulls on drag, boss. That way the herd won't even see him. Well, the boys will be glad to pull double shifts to help out. She was jilted. She uh, hasn't got anyone else to turn to, really. All right, all right. I can't stand to see grown men cry. Stay with us until we hit the next town. Mr. Favor, I the don't... The next town. Just as you say. And, I, and I'm extremely grateful. Help! Somebody do something! <laughs> I just can't understand it. It's that scarf, Joe. Carnoustie there just don't like Yeller. Oh, must be something more than that. I've never heard him so unruly. Must be the prairie nuts. Prairie nuts? Blemishes of a minor sort. He gets them constantly on his back. You wouldn't by any chance mean warble flies. Well, I don't know what you call them. Blemishes in Scotland are called something else, but I'm sure that you'll know what to do with them. Uh, Mr. Favor, do start shaving, because your lather's going hard. You must be uh, Mr. Wishbone and Mr. Mushy. Well, Wishbone, how quaint. You know, you, you resemble a cousin of mine. His star was Haggis, a bit of a gourmet, as I recall. 
also. I think he dabbled in medicine. <laughs> I guess I better get back to the herd. Hell, oh, me too. Yeah, I better get this wagon. Miss Yates! Have you ever seen a herd done with warble flies? Gee, no, I can't say that I have. And you wouldn't want to see anything messy like that either, would you? You mean? That's right. You're going to get the chance to dip Carnoustie and all his little friends. All right? All right. I don't mind dipping bowls. I thought so. Carnoustie needs a bath. That's all right, man. Oh, do, do be careful, Mr. Yates. Keep your dip out of his eyes. Yeah, I'm trying my best not to. Gotta be done. It's the only way to get rid of the warble flies. Are you all right? Oh, I'm fine, yes. Oh, it's a fumes. It's mostly sulfur and aspheta. It's, it's worse than rotten eggs. You sure you don't want to go back to camp? No, I'm fine. Critters, it's past your bedtime. Settling down any? Afraid not, boss. It's them bulls. They ain't doing nothing but just. Yeah, I know. Carnoussi and his friends. All right, keep them tight. I'll put some more men on those bulls to make sure they stay on their side of the fence. Right down, you old moss box. You ain't going nowhere. Such an idyllic pastoral scene, but I was under the impression you were going to spend a bit of time with them nice little bulls tonight. Oh, yeah. Well, you see, it was that um, warble fly dip, boss. I couldn't stand myself afterwards. Elixir of rose blossom petals and honeysuckle buds. Yeah, well, that's Miss Dundee's. It's the only thing I could find that was strong enough. Boy, are those bulls gonna love you tonight. And all night long, too. Horrible mm. flies. Dundee, I'm just getting warmed up. There you are, Mr. Faber. We were wondering where you'd got to. Oh, I'd bet on that. Oh, so the Englishman was right. 
truly a man who has no music in himself. He's fit for treachery, stratagems, and spoils. Why, these men of yours, they dance so well, they must have a drop or two of Scott's blood in them. <laughs> or a drop or two of the Orkney special. <laughs> oh, sir, tell the truth, boss. I just couldn't resist it. And guess what, Mr. Faber? Miss Dundee, she thinks we're related. My middle name's Milligan and her great uncle. Angus Milligan, regimental commander, the Queen's own volunteer guard. That is, uh, before he emigrated to America. Ah, oh, the poor dear. We never have heard of him since. Mr. Mushgrove here. He could be his twin. Yeah. Uh, she showed us a picture, his spitting image. But we thought it was only proper to unpack Uncle Angus's regimentals. Ah, doesn't he cut a bunny figure? Crafty would be more like it. All right, Munchie, let's get out of that fool outfit and get behind the self-respecting apron where you belong. Yes, sir. Fool outfit? Quince, if that pile of junk don't disappear in five minutes, you're going to be riding Nighthawk in it all evening. Pile of scrap? Just a favor. Now, maybe you haven't noticed it, but this is a cattle drive and not a traveling carnival. But... So, while we're enjoying the benefit of your company, you will confine yourself to the chuck wagon. And please, let's keep this claptrap where it belongs, huh? Claptrap, indeed. For your information, Mr. Faber, that claptrap, as you call it, represents a 400-year heritage of proud life and noble death, honored on the battlefields of Europe, to the Baskerville Moors, to the great stones of St. James himself. A heritage that was flourishing when your ancestors thought treetops were homes. <laughs> Claptrap indeed, Mr. Faber. Huh. Well, that dinner gonna jump into the pot all by itself? For your information, Mr. Trail Boss, that dinner's all done and just simmering while Miss Dundee's pies is getting done. Pies, which I might add, she's made special for you and the men. <laughs> I think I got this all wrong. Maybe uh, you should be riding night guard and I should be back with the pots and pans. Hardly, Mr. Yates. You see, Macduff and I were practically brought up together. There's no need to watch over them. All they need do to settle is a good night from me. Well, I'm afraid Mr. Favor doesn't agree. He says watch him, so we watch him. Insurance, you might say, to be on the safe side. Your Mr. Favor is a stern taskmaster, isn't he? Well, driving the men is the biggest part of driving cattle, I'm afraid. Yes, I suppose so. Uh, you wouldn't consider me part of the cattle drive, would you? Uh, well, if you were, I'm afraid we'd have more drovers than we do steers. Then you will help? How? Well, help me to change Mr. Favor's mind. Well, he can't just drop me at the next town. That's playing right into his hands. Whose hands? Mr. White in the manor was supposed to marry. Oh, he'd do anything to get my bulls back. He's probably notified every constable in the territory to arrest me on sight. Now look, Kathleen, the law works both ways. Now, all you have to do is... There's nothing I can do. That's what I keep telling you. I'm not even a citizen. The law's all on his side. Please speak to Mr. Favor. He'll listen to you. All I want to do is to get back to Denver. Then I can sell Dunheath, oh, to a good family, of course, and then secure my passage to Aberdeen. Please, Mr. Yates, if you don't, I'll never get home. Yeah, but look... Oh, I'm only a woman. All I can do is beg. Well, I'll see what I can do. Oh, Mr. Yates, I'll be eternally grateful.
Boss, you're not going to believe this. Believe what? I never thought I'd see the day that the bulls could drive cattle better than we could. Look. Just having them back there seems to make the steers a little nervous. Pushes their speed up. If we keep the bulls around at this rate, we'll be in Denver a month early. You can uh, keep that bull. I'll see you in Denver. Old Carnoustie there, he's gone plumb goofy. Got the whole tail end of that herd running around in circles. Carnoustie, huh? He's mad at somebody. At somebody, Scarlet. Something. Look, boss. Daisies. Yellow daisies. Uh, oh, tell me. I bet I know. Carnoustie don't like yellow, huh? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, well, what was you saying about how helpful Bulls is on a cattle drive? Well, uh, you see... And that, uh, and that little girl that talks to them and keeps them real nice and quiet. Now, where do you suppose she's got to, huh? Oh, well, maybe she got lost. Or, I guess. Now, that would be a shame, wouldn't it? Well, boss, now... Find her, Mr. Yates. You find her on her wagon and her bulls, and you lump them all together. That way, you shouldn't have any trouble when you leave. Leave? That's right. You're leaving in the morning. You and Mr. Quince and all of Aberdeen, Scotland, and Macduff and Dunheath and Monmouth and Carnoustie are going to disappear. Just like that, you're all going to disappear. Where are we going to take her? Back where you found her, anywhere. I don't care just so long as you keep her away from this herd. Is that clear? Well, yeah, it's clear. I... Maybe we... Could get in a little cattle driving now, huh? All right. Oh, is that? Yeah.
Dundee! You did say Miss Dundee. No, that was Mr. Yates, and I didn't bother to correct him. Didn't bother? For your information, Mr. Wishbone, I've left my husband. I had the hopes of a marriage declared a null and void. Well, are you also going to declare that baby null and void? Lady, there isn't a doctor around here in 50 miles. My baby isn't expecting it, and I believe I can still count. Well, maybe you can, but the baby can't. There's really nothing to worry about, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, that's fine for you to say, but what about me? I helped deliver a few calves into this world, but if you think I... Yeah. Oh. You just push, and I'll tug. We Dundee's a sturdy stock. We carry our children well. My mother was harrowing Clover to the last hour, and I was... Born en route to the barn. Barn? Well, all we got's wagons. <laughs> well, if necessary, that'll do fine. Well, nothing's gonna do fine when Roddy and Mr. Favor find out about this. Mr. Wishbone, that's exactly why I've been trying to conceal the truth. The immortal conspiracy of mankind. Superior beings, honor bound to present a solid, unwavering front to the weaker sex. No matter who's right or who's wrong. Tell them that I dare to defy the nuptial fetters of felicitude forever to a fellow man. And your Mr. Favor and Mr. Yates will have me dropped at the nearest doctor's doorstep as if I were a blight on society and leave me to the mercy of that gruesome monster I once called a husband. Well, monster or no monster, you still ought to be in doctor's care. You wouldn't even be out here if you wasn't ailing. It's a minor circuitry condition. Common in pregnancy, and the cool waters take the swelling of the ankle down. There's nothing to worry about. Well, I still got to tell him. Mr. Wishbone, you do that and you'll be committing murder. If that husband of mine gets me in his clutches, my spirit will die. And that means I'll die, too. Please, Mr. Wishbone, don't tell me. But... I promise that at the first signs, I'll tell them myself. And then you can go out and scare up 50 doctors if it'll make you feel any better. Fair enough. Well, fair or not, they're still going to find out. Motherhood has a way of getting around on a cattle drive. And when Mr. Favor finds out, I know what he's going to say. <laughs> what the doctor ordered. Oh, but Mr. Wishbone. Yeah, no buts about it. There's an extract of iron and calcium and phosphorus in there, just the thing for blood and bones. Now, either you take it or I'll talk. Oh, man. Now, I know just how you feel, but there's more important things than getting to Denver. And whatever you think of Mr. Favor, he's doing the right thing. You got no business at all out here, you being in a family way and all. Mr. Wishbone, my uncle Mackintosh marched 1,000 feverish highlanders over the Kuiper Pass in the dead of winter with nothing more to keep him going than his bagpipe and three kegs of Aberdeen ale. A Dundee never surrenders and never retreats. I'll get to Denver if I crawl there on my hands and knees I'll get there. 
And my blood and bones are fine, thank you. This will be real good for the men. the coffee. There's nothing wrong with a little calcium and phosphorus. Matter of fact, there's some around here I know could use a little iron, a little less lead. Trail boss around? Yeah, looking at what's left of him, your favor. Oh. Lost my horse a few miles back. Saw your herd. I figured I might deal with you for another animal. To me, like you could use something solid behind your belt more than a horse. See what I can rustle up. Wires. You uh, usually do your traveling at night, Mr. Uh... Uh, Whiting. Richard Whiting. And as to when I do my traveling. Yeah, it's only jerky, but it's filling. Oh, thank you. Don't look like I got much choice, seeing as how I'm trying to follow a trail that wanders over half the territory. Might be you can help. Wrong, Mr. Whiting. You mean you were looking for someone. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Trying to steal a woman's dowry. Hold it, hold it. What's this all about? Him. The man who jilted Miss Dundee. She told you that? That and more, you thief. Oh, I haven't got warmed up yet. What right have you to leave me? What right? Well, look, if this is a private argument, why don't you take it someplace private? You run off and leave me. Leave you? To go traipsing around half the territory in a wagon my old man wore out 30 years ago with nothing but four half-wild bulls. Half-wild? To keep you company, no food, no money, and you ask me what right I had to follow you? Mr. Whiting, when you abandoned me, you also abandoned all the rights and claims to anything that existed before the fact. I abandoned you? All right, fella, you oh, bet just a model. Oh, wait a minute, Roddy. They're married. Married? Oh, no, we're not. I told all the neighbors he was null and void before I left. I don't care what you told the neighbors. You're going home if I have to drag you by the hair. Oh, no, I'm not. Never. Mr. Faber, you're a reasonable man. No, true. This man married me under false pretenses. Once he'd got me and my bulls in his power, he put Canoosty and Macduff to service ordinary range cows. And for what? So he could buy more range cows for Monmouth and Dunheath. And as if that wasn't enough, he used my great Irish grandmother's porcelain night pot as a spittoon. I didn't know it was no antique. And then he dared to cart my dowdy, my precious heirlooms, every one of them out to his barn. Hmm. I'm likely to make nests for rodents. I still say a thing ain't got no use, you junk it. And finally, having shredded me of all my pride and reducing me to the status of a chambermaid, he finally took the humiliating step. He deliberately stole my dot, my grandmother's thriftily preserved 92 pounds sterling, and he abandoned me. Now I ask you, Mr. Faber, what would you do? Well, now, I... Oh, that's it. That's exactly what I did. Run. And run and run and run till I was far away from his designing and deceitful lies. Kathleen... I did not abandon you. I went to San Anton to buy a decent strain of Herefords to breed with your Aberdeen bulls. And as for your grandmother's dot, I put it in a bank where it belongs. Lies, lies, lies. Oh, you don't fool me, and you don't fool any of my friends either. All right, that's enough. No more talk, no more cock and bull stories. You're going home, and I mean right now. Don't forget to take your bulls with you. Oh, no, I'm not. Never over my dead body. I may not be able to swing right, but there's nothing wrong with my aim. Liberty in every blow. Come on, let's do it. Oh! 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 Miss Dundee, I mean, Mrs. Whiting, is it? Oh, Mr. Wishbone, I don't think we're going to have time to scare off those 50 doctors. Kathy. It's all right, mister. You're just going to be a daddy. A baby? Yeah. Rushy! Blake! 
tickets. And I think hot water. Happening? Not yet. Well, look, isn't there something that I can... don't worry? You'll know. Uh, you, you look like you need this. Well, I need you. You ain't got women. Oh, I know how you feel. Yeah, me too. Look at it. Must be at least a ton of it. Junk. And I helped cart it all the way from Scotland. And them bulls. Like they was part of the family. Family? Say, hey, Whiting, you know, you may be right. Maybe they are family. And to a woman, everything she owns is part of her family. And this junk's got family written all over it, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, especially this here bathtub. Now, now I know... Uh, Females sort of hard to understand at times, especially with things like dowries. But you got to be calm and sensible about it, like me. You got to look to the other side of it. Now stop and think about it, Whiting. All this junk, I mean, all these priceless family heirlooms here, they represent 400 years of living. The heritage of a family that was making history before Lewis and Clark ever realized there was unmapped territory west of the Mississippi. Now, of course, I know it doesn't mean much to you or me, but to a woman. Well, I gotta admit, I ain't never quite looked at it that way. Yeah, that's right, Whiting. You just haven't been thinking of it right. Well, uh, <laughs> just think of it. You're liable to be the only man this whole territory has his own personal iron suit. Yeah, yeah, Rowdy. Oh, of course, uh, well, it'd take a lot of doing to meet her halfway. It'd take an awfully big man to pull that off. Oh, I don't know. No, I don't know. What's in this? Boiled rocks? Oh, well, that's uh, just a little uh, calcium and, and phosphorus. It's the best thing in the world for a new father. Oh. Is he still there? If he don't quit pacing out there, he's gonna dig a trench right through our camp. But it's all an act. He doesn't care, not really. I don't know. He seemed like a reasonable enough man. Reasonable? After what? Oh. Oh, no. oh! I'll take your word for it. Now, you just save your strength. You're gonna need it. Well, I still say he doesn't care. Well, any man that's done as much trailing as he has has to care some. When he first come in here, he looked like he was shopping for a pine box. <laughs> he did look a bit starchy, didn't he? <laughs> well, he's gonna look a lot worse before he looks any better, unless you do something about it. What can I do? You can meet him halfway, that's what. But yes, but I... Oh, Mr. Wishbone. Oh. It's all right, I'm here. Just keep talking, just keep talking. Hush, my baby, on the treetop. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. See your family. Harkness, I think that I will have a cup of coffee. Yes, sir. You, uh, you sure you're all right? Yes, of course I'm all right. 
You've asked me that three times. Yes. Look at your son. <laughs> Look at that. I think Macbeth's a nice name. Don't you agree? <laughs> well, we better get started. Get started? But you just had a... Hitch up the team. You don't think I'm going home without my dowry, do you? Oh, we better get to rounding up them strays, I guess. Oh, no. You two are going on drag to stay. The only way I can make sure the right strays come back is to do it myself. Crockery. That's decent of you. But if you think you're going to spread that crazy pewter around my office, you got yourself another thing coming. Mr. Whiting, the pewter is not crazy. And it goes with that dungeon that you call an office. And it's for that fool bag of wind, or whatever you call it. Bad pipe. Bad pipe. Whatever it is, you play it down in the South Meadow where my ears can stand it. Or so help me, I'll burn the fool back. So much as touch it. And my great grandfather's battle axe on each garden again. So, I'd have to have a pair of eyes short not to. Yeah, might as well get used to it. We're in Membrano country now. Two things I can't stand, Apaches and corn liquor. Mr. Carver! Up there.
Fernando Reno. They jumped it. All right, take it easy, Sergeant. Got it? No chance. He's been packing a dead man. I get some of the boys backtrack. Pick up a trail. Grant, this is army business. We'll leave it like that. You can double back to Sumner and let them know. Well, now, Quince, now. Got it? Good wish going up here. Eight years of training, nine years of beans and hay, sun-fried hell. That's all it adds up to, a pile of rocks and a couple of sticks. Sorry it had to happen this way, man. Well, that's just a point, Mr. Favor. It didn't have to happen. Captain Stoner rode up there to talk, not fight. Major, it's coming around. That's far enough, Sergeant. You can talk just as loud sitting as you can standing. Major Blake. Where's the captain? He's dead. Sergeant, what happened? Well, sir, we got up to Gila Flats, all right. And we sat down with old Nantana for the better part of a day. And the captain, he... he talked himself blue, trying to buy more time. But it just wouldn't go down. Nantana just said that either the army honors that treaty or buries it. So we pulled out, and we got as far as Rio Seco, and they jumped us. White flag and all, they jumped us. Who jumped you, Sergeant? Oh, sir. When an Apache jumps you, nobody sees him. It don't take no heavy thinking to make an educated guess. It was Del Latico. Del Latico? Yeah, he ain't no plain Apache either. Well, uh, short of the horns, he's a homegrown Lucifer. It's a broth. I drink it down. Hey, Major. I thought you boys had thrown away the key on that renegade. Well, like bad pennies, Mr. Favor, keys have a way of turning up. One of the terms of our treaty with the Apache was complete amnesty, even for an incorrigible hostile like Del Latigo. Lieutenant, I want five volunteers, full pack, ready to ride in one hour. Right, sir. Major Blaine. Sir, me and that Del Latigo, we've got something neat settling. I'm ready to ride any time you say. Well, we're going to ride all right, Sergeant. And that's all we're going to do, is ride. But, Sergeant, I don't think you're in any condition to go along. Begging the Major's pardon, sir. I feel just fine. All right, Sergeant. One hour, sir, and I'll pick the best volunteers in the platoon. Look, Major, if that's it, uh, we'll be pulling out now. We got a lot of miles to cover before sundown. I'm afraid not, Mr. Favor. You're not going anywhere. You see, we've got exactly seven days, one week, to honor our end of the treaty with the Tante and his membranos. Now, if we don't, this territory will be knee-deep in blood. You keep riding north, and you and your men and your herd will be right in the middle of it. Look, Major, I've got 3,000 head of cattle out there who've got nothing but water and graze on the mines. If I have to hold them here for over a week, they ain't gonna have nothing on their mines. Mr. Favor, better 3,000 dead steers than 20 dead Texans. I'd suggest that you go back. What do you mean, turn back? Across 60 miles of desert? Well, we just got here as it is. Then you have no other alternative other than to wait here and hope I make the Gila Flats in time. One other thing, Mr. Favor. I'm commandeering 200 head of your herd. You, you commandeering what? Well, that's the only way that I can keep Natanta and his membranos on the reservation. You see, that was one of the terms of our treaty, 
the delivery of 200 head of cattle for the first, and that's just seven days off. Like most requisitions, the order for that beef is probably in some fat politician's desk drawer. That's why I sent Captain Stoner up here. Ask for more time. That's your answer. So I've got to get the cattle up there. I can't go in official force, nor can I go in any capacity at all. Oh, that's why I asked for volunteers. Major, if this Del Lottico is the one that jumped your captain, you don't think he's going to let you up there to the Gila Flats? Well, I'm gambling that he hasn't many men. Well, there's a little more to it than that, Major. Gila Flats is a good 50 miles east of here, and it's all desert. It's going to take a lot of luck and a lot of know-how to push 200 ahead through there in seven days. I know it, and you ought to know it, Major. You ain't got a chance. Mr. Faber, if I were a gambling man, I'd like to make you a little wager on that. See, I have to make it. Now, here's your requisition notice for 200 head even. The Army will honor it. Oh, in the due course of time, that is. You heard the man. Cut out the beef. One more thing, Mr. Faber. If any of your cattle decide to stray off, uh, Lieutenant Jenkins will be under order to open fire. It's been a real pleasure, sir. <laughs> Go on, can't go back, can't stay here. What are you gonna do? Only one thing to do, Wick. Enlist. should be back sometime tomorrow. You tell him to hold the herd here till I get back. Because if I don't show by the first, you'd better start heading south again. Right, boss. Till you get back. Yeah, well, like you, I ain't much of a gambler, Major, but don't take any riverboat card shark to figure the odds against your uh, volunteer cattlemen getting to Gila Flats in any seven days. Have a look. You can cut those odds down. Yeah, well, that's what I'm paid for. It's my job, pushing cattle. And if you don't get through, I'm out of a job. If you go along with me and I don't get through, you might be out of a lot more than a job. Like I said, that's what I'm paid for. Now as to who's given orders about the beef. Now what? Well, uh... Wish and I figured you could use a little company. Well, a man needs something more in his belly than army beans and hay. Well, I left Mushy with plenty to feed the men till we get back. Mr. Faber, I've been through there once or twice before, and you're gonna need a few shortcuts. I thought Apache's made you nervous, Jim. Well, it's that doggone waiting. Uh, makes me break out something terrible. Uh, no use you breaking out in a sweat. If those army fellows can volunteer, so can we. Jim, you better get on out there and settle them down before they get scattered from here till kingdom come. I'll take the lead. cattle and the yellow legs will drive them. You are wrong, Cado. The cattle are driving them into my hand. All I have to do is but to close it. Now go. Before there were only two. Now there are nine. Nine rifles. Nine or nine hundred makes no difference. This I promise you. They will never reach in the flats. Now go.
and get it. Right now, back off there. Form a line. Where do you think you are? This isn't any army mess. Just mind your manners. Ten hours pushing them four-legged locomotives you call cows, and you expect manners? You know, hurry up there. Wish me when you got to run for your life. Mm, I ain't smelled nothing that good since my last hog fry up Chattanooga way. <laughs> you hear that, Quince? I always did say these boys in blue got taste, real taste. <laughs> Wish that coyote hush up. Gives me the squeakers. Yeah, that coyote's got two less than four legs. He'll give you the squeakers, boy. Hard to tell him. Apart from Patches. Sure doesn't make me break up. Well, let's scratch on that for a while. Yeah. About time. Five more minutes and there wouldn't have been anything left. Well, that's army training, Wishbone. As long as it ain't froze or don't wiggle all over the... <laughs> You fear one, Apache, without weapons? The yellow leg is a woman, fit only for the driving of cows. And the Apache is an animal, fit only for shooting men in the back. Sorry! Put that sidearm away. The latter go to keep a treaty. This yellow leg would gladly wear a bonnet and skirts. That's why we're here, to keep a treaty. Treaty is a word. And words are like the air, to be used and blown away. But now, could it be the one of the whip now speaks for Natanta, chief of the Membranos? Natanta is no longer a Membreno. He's a bent old branch, bent to the will of his enemies. Better to be the branch of a living old tree than the trunk of a dead one. What's your price for peace? The Membreno need no white man's peace, or his cattle. Take them both back where they belong. You may try to fight, but not Natanta, not your people. One voice is not a nation. You will not be heard. You hear me, Yellow Legs. Between here and Gila Flats, there are many miles, Apache miles. Go on, and only your spirit will cross them. This I promise you. Sergeant! Why not stop it now before it starts? Because we have a treaty with the Membranos, that includes Del Latigo. Until he starts to fire on us, we can't risk breaking that treaty. Is that understood? Understood, sir. Well, I'll say one thing about that buck. When he says something, there ain't no guesswork about it. Mr. Wishbone, I'll need provisions for three days. Provisions? Oh, I agree with you, Pike. Del Latigo will try to stop us. I can't bring up the company in force, but I can bring up Natanta. The Membrano themselves will stop the lot ago. So until I return, Mr. Fable will be in charge. Major. Just get the cattle through. They come first. Major. The lot is gonna have the scouts out. Did it take a uh, person half shadow and half desert rat to get through alone? Do you have another alternative, Mr. Faber? <laughs> Just jerky and hard tack, but it ought to do you. I'm sure it will, Mr. Wishbone. Good luck, Major. And to you, Mr. Favor. To all of it.
with him about an hour ago. We're going to better swing in and tell you before I take a look. Boink! Visitors. Could be a trap. Could be something else, too. Keep them moving, Wish. Let's go. I volunteered. Thing could do that. Whip. Go back and get him. Have wish bring up a wagon. All right, Sergeant, let's cut him down. Dirty, stinking animals. Lousy, filthy animals. No man could do that favor. That ain't human. It's done, Pike. Talking ain't gonna change it. No. It ain't done. Not till every mother's son of them's dead. You hear that? You hear that, Delago? Not till every mother's son of you is dead. Well, come on! Come on, I'll fight! Come on! Mike! Put it away. I'll, I'll need some help. He's hot, black enough to stand by itself. Uh, I don't need any coffee for what I got to say. Well, just what have you got to say, Sergeant? Just one thing. What are we doing down here? You heard what the Major said, Sergeant? I heard. We're to deliver 200 cows to Gila Flats. And just like that, the Apaches take up needlework and toe dancing. You saw what they did to the Major? That's the only kind of treaty they'll honor. There's just one piece for an Apache, and that's a bullet belt buckle high front and center. Your own Major Blaine said it, Pike. No one man is a nation. Delatigo dug that grave over there, not the Membrano. We'll get those cattle through. His own people will dig a grave for him. Yeah. And if they don't, what then, Favor? Maybe we can fight our way out of here? Eight rifles against 800? Look, I'm army. I get paid for fighting. But what we're doing here ain't fighting. It's suicide. You think we ought to hightail it out of here, Sarge? Only long enough to pick up the rest of the company. Sixty men behind us. We'll make a treaty with them Apaches they'll never break. <laughs>
horses were loose. Well, it could have been a lot worse. Anybody hurt? Oh, I've been flea bit worse. Uh, flea bites don't bleed. You come along with me. No need, Sergeant. The rope on them ponies. We're gonna need them later. I hope you ain't still thinking of going back. With or without your favor, it's your choice to make. You're wrong. There's no choice left, not for none of us. Well, take a look. I don't care how you read it, that smoke says the back door just got closed. So it's either flat suicide or no. And Tonton and his batch is the only choice we got left. I still say we can get through. Well, just keep on saying it, Sergeant, and you'll end up believing it. Mr. Favor's right. We got to keep on going, just like the Major said. Hey, we got us a live one out here. Hello, be dog. Ain't no buck, it's a female. Well, now, what's a female doing riding with Delatigo? Male, that uh, makes no difference. They're all vermin. I don't make that look. Somebody's creased her head pretty good, but she's gonna be all right. And yeah, will you just get out of the way and I'll fix that. Hold it, Pike. An Apache's an Apache. You saw what they did to the Major? All the more reason for keeping her alive, then. Let her own people settle it. Alive, she's proof that the Major tried to keep his end of the treaty. Did she? would just be the best reason we never should have started up this way in the first place. So it's Gila Flats, me and my men, 200 head of cattle, and the girl. If you want to cut out, you can, but you do it right now. I would keep in mind, though, that uh, it'd just be you against the whole of Del Atigo's pack. Together, the odds make a little more sense, but then that's up to you. All right, Faber. But just remember, you got seven lives riding on your deal. Let's get moving. Take care, Roca. Four horses. One yellow leg, maybe two. Hmm. And us? Joaquin, Brazo, and La Lota. Three, two, one. We're ready to ride. No, they expect that. Now we fight them with a weapon they cannot see. Their own fear. What you doing? Why don't you ask Favor? He's got all the answers. Hey, what have you done with your sling? Oh, that thing just gets in the way. Well, blood poisoning gets in the way, too. That wound opens up, you can start looking for your coffin lumber. Now, get over there. What are you doing, boy? Keeping a diary? Well, I promised Ma I'd write once a week, so I'm, I'm right. Run across the post office. I'll let you know.
keep this up, why, you're gonna have to hang out a shingle. Sweet talk isn't gonna get you a thing. Now, whether you like it or not, whether it gets in your way or not, the sling will keep this thing from festering. Take a look, boys. A real live Apache female. Right down to the knife. Now, you can do this easy, or you can do it hard. It's all up to you. Sergeant, she's scared half to death. Oh. Only half? Well, maybe I can do something about Frank. Pick it up. Frank, leave it be. I will favor, after I teach her some manners. I said, pick it up. All right, then. We'll do it your way. Frank! I said, leave a bee, I mean it. Forget it, Pike. It'll keep. Not for long, it won't. Not for long. could have let him kill me, but you didn't. Why? Among other things, you're worth more to me alive. Wish you'd better take a look at her head. Come on over and sit down now. Sit. First off, let's start with your name. Yeah. This is going to smart some. How many warriors ride with Del Lotto go? Just a little turpentine and alcohol. If it don't uh, kill the germs, it'll scare them away. Now, come sun up, you'll be as good as new, short of an acre or two. How come you ride with Del Lotto go? Because the Apache and Yellowleg are enemies. Well, your men folks in us, well, we might be enemies, but I couldn't shoot no woman. Canada, Alamosa, Yellowleg. The place you call Camp Grant. Ninety Aravaipa Apaches. Without weapons. Without food. Without shelter. But when they came, we fought. With sticks and, and rocks, we fought. Until we could fight no more. Until the ground was red with our own blood. Canada, Alamosa. Sixty-two women and children butchered and six old men. But not me. Not La Lota. I lived. Only to die another way. They gave me to the yellow legs. And when they were done, I was alive only because there was no strength left to die. Which then I found Del Artico. They tied him to a wheel and whipped him until they thought he was dead. But he lived. And in living, gave me life. No, Yellow Lake, I am not a woman. I am a warrior. Kill me now while you still can. Is 
that favor. An Apache's an Apache. step Apache that's all the excuse I'm gonna need when does a yellow leg need an excuse to kill the man are tired be ashamed to wake him up for nothing you get on back where you belong how long yellow leg how long do you think you can watch me and the night Dalatico is here so is death. Very soon you will meet both. Not alone. Not without a couple of dogs to keep me company. And you just might be one of them. You don't watch your step. A dog does what it is told. Not an Apache. Better your gun speaks now. Not yet. Not till you know why. Open it. Open it. Take a good look. And listen. Listen real good. Names don't matter. She was only a girl. My girl. She was on her way out here to say the I do's when your people jumped her stagecoach. And the prettiest brown hair. Time we found her. Nobody uses a knife like an Apache. Nobody. Now you can take your choice. Right here, right now, or later on with the rest of us. Jim, Delatica's gonna hit his. Gonna have to do it pretty soon. I'll send Pike and Larson out to keep you company. Are getting me, Mr. Favor. Next thing you know, I'll be stomping on my own shadow. Yeah, well, as long as it ain't mine, Hawkins. You seen anything? No, it's quiet as Martin County Churchyard. Yeah, I'm expected to stay that way too long. Keep your eyes open. 
All six of them. Cowboy, you sold you pretty good. I'm obliged. Need every gun we got. Hawkins? Never knew what hit him. The driver! That let go hit the herd on the far side. There's no way I could hurt him. Right now, they're scattered real good. Nothing much we can do about it now. Not without horses. All we can do is dig in and wait. Busted, I think. Well, it's still in there. It's got to come out. Oh, it ain't the first time. Might as well get started. With what? My left hand? Guess that elects you favor. Yeah. Well, I can give it a go. You're gonna have to take it slow. This knife's about as sharp as it can get. Oh, Larson, I'll need some help. When I say you grab on to him and... Hang on tight. No. I will do it. Like you say, no one can use a knife like an Apache. This I've done many times. The yellow leg barks like a bear. I want to see if he bleeds like a man. Maybe even like an Apache. Never like an Apache. Start cutting. any tighter, won't be anything left to bandage. No, uh, that could have come out a lot harder. If you made it easy and then why? Because for a girl with brown hair, it was not so easy. Also, now you will live to die from Del Lodico's rifles, not from a knife. You owe me nothing, yellow leg. any shorter, too. Yeah. Why don't you take a breather, Quince? I'll stand your watch for you. Now you feel up to it? Sure, I wouldn't offer it. 
Well, maybe for a short time, huh? I'll call you. Well, you do it loud and clear, Sergeant. Say 15 minutes, I'm gonna turn my back on that horse. Which means nobody's gonna be watching it. You turn your back on an Apache? Why? Well, the way I see it, ain't none of them treaty cows gonna get anywhere near Gila Flats. And neither are any of us. Which means a Del Ladigo and these bucks are gonna bust the top right out of this territory. And before it's over, there'll be more burned out stagecoaches and more camp grants. Now, somebody should know that six yellow legs and three cowpushers at least tried to stop it and died trying. And you are going to be that somebody. You're going to live the rest of your life with that. Fifteen minutes. And don't look back. I might change my mind. Must have dozed. Didn't see a thing. Uh, too late to do anything now, anyway. Sergeant, take a close look. Now, believe me, that buckskin of mine never looked so pretty before in his life. You broke a treaty, and with it, the word of your people. You have until the sun is gone to leave this land. Show your face again to me, and I will show you your grave. My grave. You woman, it is better than your treaty. the treaty. It will honor you. Your horses will be returned, and my warriors will gather the cattle. When you have rested, you will be welcome in my village. It's funny. I always used to think sleeping on duty was a pretty bad offense. Well, let's keep traveling. Disapprove. 